This is part two on our episode about how to make your audio loud, but not too loud. And specifically in this case, of course, we're looking primarily at dialogue audio, but it can apply to pretty much any audio. And we'll do that this time in Adobe Audition using loudness normalization and true peak limiting. Let's have a look. All right, as promised, we are going to take a closer look here at loudness normalization and a concept called true peak limiting. Now, if you didn't catch part one of the episode, what we talked about there was loudness normalization using an online service called Auphonic.com. And what that does is you just upload your files, it loudness normalizes, can do a couple of other things for you too, like noise removal. You can download the file once it's done processing, go ahead and sync that back up to your video and you should be good to go. If you don't like the settings that or the processing it did based on the settings you set, you can set the settings to something else and have it reprocess, no problem. Really great service. Let's look at it in a more, at a more manual level so we can get a kind of a deeper understanding of it here. I am not an expert at this. Again, I just learned about this last week. So I'm really kind of experimenting with it and learning from it. What I'm excited about and what this all is, the purpose of all this is to help you get more consistent pleasing sound for your audience in your programming, whatever that may be. And in my case, it's mostly YouTube videos or corporate videos. Um, but I've always struggled, it seemed like, to get the right loudness out of the audio. And it felt like sometimes I nailed it somehow and it wasn't totally repeatable. Other times I felt like I followed the exact same workflow, same process, you know, setting my gain, getting the recording levels about minus 12 dB. But then once I brought it in, and started playing around with it in Adobe Audition, felt like I had to do all sorts of compression to get it to a good loudness level. And then it ended up sounding just really compressed and kind of fatiguing to the ears and just a, a, an unpleasant thing. So that's really the purpose of this, to standardize the process for you and to make it much easier and more reliable to get to a good loudness level that sounds good and uh, is consistent also from episode to episode. So let's take a look at how that works. I've just got a piece of audio here. Let me just play a little section here for you so you can see what it sounds like where we're starting. It really simplifies the process and it works pretty well in my tests so far. All right, for those of you that were just interested in kind of trying that new service and you don't necessarily want to dig into the gore. Okay, it's a decent enough recording. It's not amazing. There was a uh, a uh, chest freezer in that room, which you could actually hear, and you'll hear actually more <laughs> once we normalize it. But so that's an issue that I need to address in other ways. And I'm not going to dive into all that stuff. But what I would say is that you probably want to clean up your audio before you do your normalization. The normalization and the true peak limiting are the last steps you want to do uh, before you're before you finish processing your audio. So we're going to do a couple things here first. As I've mentioned before, I have a very sibilant voice, so I'm gonna use a little bit of a de -esser. I'm not gonna dive into the details on why or, or, or how to do that. In this episode, we'll look at that another time. And then I'm also going to do one other thing um, that I'd like to explain here. I am gonna use a little bit of a, I'm gonna apply a little bit of mild compression. So if I hold this box here, the compressor, if you look above it, that's minus 15 dB. Everything above it is louder than minus 15 dB. And so I'm gonna set my threshold there and everything that's above this box will get affected by the compressor. It'll actually squash it down fairly gently and get it closer together. And same thing here, if, I, if you look below the box, everything below the box is below minus 15 and that'll be affected by the compressor. So I don't wanna affect the main body of my audio, just the peaks that are sticking out a little bit. And the reason I do that now is that once we normalize, those peaks are gonna stick out even more and they're gonna get really close or even exceed zero dB. And if they do that, we'll get clipping and distortion and that sounds awful. So we wanna kind of gently pull those back in towards the center a little bit while we're here because here we can do it a little bit more effectively than actually just applying a hard limiter where we chop off those peaks. And uh, that, can, that can start to sound a little strange. So um, go ahead and set the threshold of minus 15 in this case, 2.5 ratio, which is a fairly mellow ratio, again, not too extreme. Our attack and release, we're gonna set to seven milliseconds and 100 milliseconds and then leave the output gain at zero. Let's go ahead and apply that and see what happens to our audio. Gonna run through the processing here and we should watch these peaks here and see what happens to them. Yes, indeed, it looks like it pulled them back in. And up here on top, we're pretty much 
contained under minus 12 dB with the bulk of things under minus 15. Bottom here, pretty similar story. So that's a good place to start. So what we want to do next is, is actually do the loudness normalization. So we go to this panel here called Match Volume in Adobe Audition. I'm Incidentally, this is October 2014. I'm using the latest version of Audition CC. So um, I don't know when they added this. I think it was back in 2013 that they added this match volume with these uh, different standards that we're going to talk about in a second. So just so you're aware, it is, it does, uh, it is tied to a particular version of Adobe Audition. And uh, this is why I chose to show this to you in Adobe Audition. I don't know what other audio editing applications have. As far as I know, for example, Reaper, which I used prior to this, I don't believe it has this capability, or at least I never saw it. So in any case, match volume. If you don't have the match volume panel, come up here to the window menu and make sure that match volume is checked and it will show up down here. Then we drag our audio file down into the box here. And then we have some settings to apply here. Now, what the first thing does, the match to, is actually a different, are, are different ways of actually measuring the loudness of your audio. Now, typical peak meters, like what we have down here, when we play this, you'll notice there's a big bar and it bounces around really pretty rapidly. That's showing what the current level is at any given very small slice of time, whether that's milliseconds or whatever. I think it's probably milliseconds. Maybe it's averaged out a little bit, but it bounces around a lot. These, or this particular metering system, ITU RBS 1770-2 loudness, is, a, is quite a bit different. It actually measures across the entire audio clip. It's not so concerned with any individual point in time, but instead with the overall loudness that's perceived across the entire audio clip. Now, when we talk about perceived loudness, what I mean by that is the way that humans hear um, is not exactly like an audio or a digital audio sy sy system works. It's a little bit different. So in a digital audio system, we have these peaks, and the digital audio system can only represent sounds up to zero dB. Anything beyond that, it starts distorting, and it can't really reproduce that. Human hearing, on the other hand, is actually more attuned to perceived loudness, which has less to do with these little transient peaks, and more to do with kind of the, the more average overall loudness level. And so that's what this measuring system attempts to to measure is perceived loudness. And it actually does a really nice job at that. So that's kind of my best way to describe it. I guess in some ways you could think of it as an average instead of a measure of individual samples within your audio clip. It could be an average across them, but it's more sophisticated than that. It's not just a simple average. Um, in any case, that's what that is. We are gonna use this particular one here. This is actually the metering system upon which most of the broadcast standards are set. So for example, in the United States, the broadcast standard is that you need to set your loudness at minus 24 dB LKFS, which is incidentally the same as LUFS. I'll talk about that more in a second. In Europe, the European Broadcast Union has set the standard to minus 23 LUFS. So very similar in Europe and the United States and most of the rest of the world as well. Um, so that's what the standards are. And Again, we're measuring here with a different system here. So we're measuring with LUFS, which is loudness units full scale. Um, that is the same thing as LKFS, which is used in the United States, which is loudness K-weighted full scale. Again, same exact thing. Those figures actually refer to dBs, and it's a measure, again, of the loudness over a larger period of time and not just any given instant in time. So we... Uh, are going to go ahead and use this metering system, and we are going to choose what loudness level we want to set it to. Now, here's where the question comes. What do you want to set this to? Well, again, I mentioned the standards for TV broadcast in U.S. are minus 24. For Europe, minus 23. LUFS, LKFS. Um, that's a good place to start if you're doing video. And in fact, that's the my preferred way to do it. You can go louder than that. There is some There are, is some thought out there that suggests that if you are producing content that will be consumed by people in very noisy environments, you probably want to go louder. And some people suggest somewhere between minus 16 and minus 18 LUFS. So that's something to consider. 
I'm going to go ahead and stick with minus 24 because I'm producing mainly to YouTube and for corporate videos. So in those cases, it works pretty well. I, I understand that more and more people may be consuming YouTube videos in noisy places with earbuds. Um, but as I look at the stats of my channel, it's not the overwhelming majority just yet. So maybe at some point we'll change. But for now, let's go with minus 24 LUFS. Now, there are some trade-offs here. If you do go louder, if you do go, say, for example, to minus 16 LUFS, your audio is going to be more compressed and it's uh, it's going to sound more compressed because what's going to happen is more of these peaks right here are actually going to get beyond zero and you're going to have to limit those off. You have to cut them off. So you will get that effect of um, audio that doesn't sound quite as nice. It doesn't sound quite as natural, but it is definitely louder. So it's definitely a trade-off. That's why I'm going to go with minus 24. I think most of my audience is still watching in environments where that's going to be loud enough, and um, that has kind of a better, more natural sound to it. So now that we have that set, uh, a couple of other settings use limiting. We're going to go ahead and leave that checked. What that means is that as it increases the loudness and, and grow, and, you know, it expands the waveforms here, some of these peaks may still approach zero dB, or they may even exceed that. And so we're going to use a limiter here that will prevent that from actually exceeding zero dB so that we don't get that distorting sound. In fact, this doesn't work perfectly and I'm gonna show you that in just a minute. And that's when we're gonna start talking about true peak limiting. Uh, go ahead and leave these at their defaults, 12 milliseconds and 200 milliseconds for look ahead time and release time and let's run. So it has to go through a few runs of this uh, to process the audio here. First, it kind of analyzes things and it applies a hard limiter and then it does some more analyzing. And you can see obviously already that our waveforms are much larger than they were before. Now, that's fantastic. We are now loudness normalized. So we are now at minus 24 LUFS, which is a very good, very comfortable listening level on most playback systems, particularly in cases where people are not in super noisy environments. Even if they are in noisy environments, they can turn their volume up still and compensate some if, they're, if their device is capable of that. But nevertheless, we're loudly normalized. That's fantastic. We have a problem though. Notice that some of these peaks are very close to zero dB. Here's an example right here. We've got another one over here, another one here. Now you might ask, well, why is that a problem? It turns out that there is a concept called true peak. And true peak is different than the actual digital uh, level of of uh, an individual sample. So this sample comes very close right here to zero dB, but technically it doesn't cross it. However, in practical terms, it can still distort and clip. And so let's just show you an example here. This is where we get into this uh, plugin that's really, really helpful in Adobe Audition. If you go up to the effects menu, special submenu, and choose loudness radar meter. Now, if I play through my audio with this open here, what will happen is it'll, it'll be measuring the loudness over time, and it will show me the LKFS figure down here. So if I play through my entire audio clip, I should get an LKFS reading of minus 24, because that's what we just normalized to. And in fact, I don't have time to do it here because it's like a 10 minute clip, <laughs> but I did run through it, and in fact, it did come out to minus 24 LKFS. So it's a, the system works pretty well. There's another thing here that this is gonna be useful to us for, and that is this peak right here. This is actually a true peak meter. And let's go ahead and play through this portion right here where we have a couple of peaks here that get pretty close to zero and see what happens. All right, for those of you that were just interested in kind of trying that new service and you don't necessarily want to dig into the gory technical details, thanks for dropping by. Make sure you're subscribed and we'll talk to you again soon. Now, of course, for those of you that want to learn a little bit more, let's give you a little background. Now, in the past, I've talked about things like normalization and compression, and... Okay, you saw that there, it actually peaked. And we might be left scratching our heads thinking, well, it, technically it didn't, how did that happen? Well, there is... Uh, <laughs> digital uh, audio systems are a little bit more complex than the, the simple numbers may show. It is possible to still peak, and what you have to do to avoid those situations, and this is something I've been struggling with for a very long time, so I'm really excited to have found out a little bit more information, is that you really kind of need to limit your peaks to minus one 
true peak. Now, the problem is, is that most audio editing applications don't have a limiter that works with true peak. So you have to use a good old fashioned, come to the effects menu, amplitude and compression, hard limiter. So what I found with my experimentation so far is that I typically have to limit at minus 2.5 dB to take care of any cases where the audio still clips. So we'll set that to minus 2.5. I want my input boost to be zero. Look ahead time, seven milliseconds. Release time, 100 milliseconds. We'll go ahead and apply that to this clip here. And you can see it definitely chopped those off. That's why I wanted to do that compression earlier because I didn't want to have to chop a lot of that off because the more you chop off, the less natural it tends to sound. So let's go back to that section we played before and see if we have any clipping now. We'll go ahead and back, back up to effects, special loudness radar meter to bring our meter back up. And let's watch to see if it peaks again this time or if it clips again this time. All right, for those of you that were just interested in kind of trying that new service and you don't necessarily want to dig into the gory technical details, thanks for dropping by. Make sure you're subscribed and we'll talk to you again soon. Now, of course, for those of you that want to learn a little bit more, let's give you a little background. Now, in the past, I've talked about things like normalization and compression. And Okay, sure enough, that seems to have taken care of those. And so we're in a much better position now. I don't know if 2.5 will work in all cases, but it's worked in all the cases I've tried so far. It'll be nice at some point when our audio editing applications start to get those true peak limiters so that we can just say minus one and have at it and, and that'll get the right level. So um, it's, a, it's a little bit more of a complex uh, reading to get those true peak uh, instances. So that's how I at present go about loudness normalizing and true peak limiting to produce my audio for my YouTube episodes and my corporate videos that I do. And uh, it seems to be working so far pretty well. So go ahead, if you've got more insights down below, maybe something we've overlooked, go ahead and leave those suggestions or those ideas down below. Love to hear from you. If you have questions, of course, leave those below as well. And if you haven't subscribed already, make sure you go ahead and subscribe. And we'll be sure to get you more great videos on how to improve your lighting and sound for video. Talk with you soon. Thank you.